In this video we will implement k-fold cross-validation and in addition to the basic algorithm we will also implement randomization such that when we repeat our cross-validation the data is shuffled. And we will also implement stratification which ensures an equal class distribution between folds. By repeating the cross-validation and shuffling the data for every repetition, we can make our evaluation more accurate, and the stratification will help making the test set a better representation of the training data. So it ensures that our model is not tested on something that it has never seen before. So let's start with the implementation. The function that we're implementing here will be responsible for generating the cross-validation pairs, so pairs of training and test data and the pairs of training and test data we will store in a list called pairs. Now what is very important is that all the operations we're performing we're not performing on the actual data, but instead we're using the indices. And the reason for that is that if we were perform all the operations on our data, then we would need to apply everything to our x and y, so our features and targets. And since we're shuffling and moving a lot of stuff, it would be very hard to keep them matched to each other. And so instead when we're using indices, we can do everything we want with them and then in the end just plug them into x and y. Nevertheless, we'll have to import our data because we will have to check which index corresponds to which class. And so we can load our data using the load iris function from sklearn. And the data that we're loading is actually a data set about flowers, representing different features of their shape. And we can get the targets by accessing the iris data Dot target. And to now make everything more accessible we will create a new cell that we can then also run to check what our code is doing. And we will also copy these parameters here such that we can pretend that our function has been called. And you might notice a slight difference to the template file which is the y that has been replaced by the strat variable. And this variable is now boolean that will determine if we want certification or not. Okay so let's copy our function code in here. Of course we also need all the imports. And now we can already have a look at our targets. And we can see we have three classes, 0, 1 and 2. We can also check the length of the target vector, which is 150. Okay, so let's create the pairs. And for that we want a list of all our indices. So we can create the variable indices and then assign to that a list to which we pass the range of n samples. And so n samples, so the number of samples that we have, we defined here as 10, but it should actually be 150. And we can also make it dynamic by checking the length of our target vector. So we can run it and now our indices variable is a list of all the indices going from 0 to 149. Okay, so this list of indices we can use for normal k-fold cross-validation. So for example, we can split this list into 10 parts, making them 10 folds, and then from these 10 folds create train and test pairs. However, if we want to do stratification, we have to be a bit more extra, because having just the indices is not enough. We also have to know which class they correspond to, and so we will create another variable called class indices. And this should be a collection of lists that contain indices of the respective classes. So we want all the indices for every class in our available classes. And we checked before, our target vector contains the classes 0, 1 and 2. And so we could just write range 3, but this would not be very general. So what we'll do instead is that we check the length of the unique elements of our target vector. And we get the unique elements with np.unique. And then we pass y to that, so our target vector, and this will then correspond to, in our case, range 3. So now for all the classes 0, 1 and 2, we want the corresponding indices. And for that we can use the np.where function, which will check where the values of our target vector y correspond to a certain value. In our case, we want them to correspond to a certain class. And let's add the list comprehension brackets. And then we can already run this code. Let's see what's now in class index. And we can see we get three lists. And each of these lists will contain the indices of one class. We can verify this by passing one of the indices lists to our target vector y. So let's say we choose the first one. And then we get all these samples from class 0. Same works for 1 and also of course 2. Now one important thing is that this npware function does not just return one value but a tuple of two values. And we can see this by checking this bracket here, which indicates a tuple 
that is closed here and there's a comma indicating that there's two values. And of course we just want our three lists here, so we'll index at zero, taking the first element. So now the comma and tuple is gone and we'll not have any issues later. Okay, now we can start with our cross-validation loop. And the first loop that we'll have will go through the repetitions. So that determines how often we will repeat our k-fold cross-validation. And we can write this with four underscore in range and then our n repetition variable. And we'll use the underscore because we're not actually interested in which repetition we currently are. Okay, and then inside the loop, the first thing that we check is if we want to apply stratification. And then immediately after that, we check if we want to apply randomization. And if both is the case, then we'll not use our normal indices, but we'll use the class specific indices, which are used for stratification, and we will have to randomize them. So we'll overwrite that variable with a shuffled version. And now it's important that we're not completely shuffling all the values because we want to keep the classes separated. So the class zero indices should not be mixed with the class one indices. And so we will shuffle separately for every of these indices lists, let's call them C, I, D, C, S, that are contained in the class indices variable. So in this list here. So we're taking every list individually and then we're shuffling. And we're shuffling again using one of NumPy's functions, namely numpy.random.permutation. And this then takes the list and gives us a shuffled version. Now we have to add the list comprehension brackets and we're missing the for keyword here. And now our code is working. We can check that by printing the class indices variable. But first we have to set random and certification to true. And so now we can see here that our class zero indices are all mixed up and we can be sure that they are all of class zero because none of the values are above 50. And as we saw before here, all the class zero indices are below 50. Okay, so now we can start building our faults and we want for the certification case, our faults to have an equal class distribution. And the way we will achieve this is that we split the indices in as many parts as we have faults. So if we have 10 folds, then we split this list here into 10 parts, the same for this class and then also the last class, and then we will combine these parts respectively. So you can imagine that this is the first part and also here, this is our first part and then this here is our first part. And then we will combine these different parts, one from each class, forming our first fold. And so to split one of these lists, we can use the function again from NumPy, array split. So we call np.array split, then pass to that our class indice list, which we will call C, and then we specify in how many parts we want to split that list, which will correspond to our number of folds. And the splitting should happen for every one of these lists. So we can write for C in and then the list here. We wrap it again into list comprehension brackets and then we assign it to some variable. We can actually have a look at what is now stored in this variable and we can see that instead of having three separate lists, every list was split into one, two, three, four, five pieces. So n folds should correspond to five and indeed it does. Okay, so now let's combine the respective parts. So that part with that part and also that part and then again this part with this part and this part. And these combinations will then form our folds, which we will store in an empty list. And so a very convenient way of iterating through multiple lists at once is with the sip argument. So we can write for c1, c2 and c3 in and then we zip this list here and then this will give us the elements of these lists one step at a time. So first the first element of this list and the first element of this list and the first element of this list and then we'll get the second element of each of these lists. So now we will concatenate them by calling np.concatenate, pass to that c1, c2 and c3 and then we will append the concatenation to our faults list. And a small detail, zip does not expect one list but multiple lists, so we'll have to use the asterisk star to unpack our list of lists. Okay, so let's check what is contained in our faults variable. And this looks a bit messy because we have the randomization activated. 
So let's turn it off for now. And now we can see that this part was combined with class 2 and class 3. So we go from 0 to 9, that's that part. Then we go from 50 to 59, which is that part. And then from 100 to 109, which is that part, so class 3. So now we have all classes equally distributed in one fold. Okay, so now we can move on to the non-certification case. And this part is fairly easy, because to create folds, all we have to do is split our indices array. So we can write np.arraySplit, we pass the indices and the number of parts we want to split into, and that's it. Of course, we also have to consider the randomization, but this is also fairly easy. So we check if the randomization should be applied, and if that's the case, then we can call from the random module, the rd.shuffle, pass our indices, and we're good to go. Don't be confused by this syntax, we're not overwriting anything because the shuffling happens in place. Okay, so now we have our folds for all the different cases, so for certification, for randomization, and for the default case. And from these folds we can now build our training and test pairs. So we will iterate through our folds, so for f, index in range number of folds and so every fold should be a test fold once. So our test folds will be the folds indexed by the f index. So then as we loop through this loop, first the first fold will be the test folds, then the second, the third and so on. And then the train folds will be the remaining folds. And we can get the remaining folds by calling np.delete. So we pass it at all our folds, then the index of the test folds, and we also have to pass the axis, otherwise it would just remove a value corresponding to this index. So imagine the index is zero, then this would remove maybe just the zero here, but not actually the whole fold. So now we have the test fold and the train folds, and now we can append them both as a tuple to our pairs list. So we write pairs.append, and then pass that as a tuple, first the train folds, and then the test fold. Okay, and now we're almost done, but we have to take care of one more thing before we return the pairs. And that is again checking if the randomization boolean was true, because if randomization is not true, then we don't want to repeat the whole cross-validation, since it wouldn't change anything if we're not shuffling the values. So if we're not randomizing, then we just break the loop. Otherwise, we would continue with the second repetition, shuffle again, and then create more pairs. And then if we finished all repetitions, we can then finally return the pairs. Great, so let's copy this code into our function, fix some indentations, and then try running our code. We get a small error, we missed an S, we don't have just a single train fold, but multiple train folds, and we also forgot to concatenate the train folds. So np.delete deletes one of the folds, but we still have multiple folds that are not combined yet, and so we call np.concatenate, and we actually forgot to define some stuff at the top here, which is to first create the pairs list, and also load the target data, so let's correct that. Now we only have some variable name issues, which come again from copying too little, so of course we also need these parts here. And now everything is working. 